Let's see. It's nice and calm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Isn't that nice? Yeah. The nice no, sound okay. of calm. I'm feeling all zen now that that's happened. Um, Emma, welcome. Welcome to another door. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming on because I know you've got a busy week and all sorts going on. So thank you for your time. Um, I am part of your group. So I'm going to put my hand up now and say I'm part of your money um, lounge group. I'm a bit of a lurker. But your work that what you do is so important and it's really shifted how my relationship with money and actually thinking about it, there's so many things that are related to it you just don't realise. And I suddenly realised some of the clients that I've been working with haven't made the leap because of a money thing and reinvention yeah. is part of having a different relationship with money. So this is why I had to get you on. So before we get stuck into that, can you just give a quick intro to yourself and then we'll get into the detail. Yes, yeah, so I am Emma Maslin, also known as the Money Whisperer, which was a name which came out when I was um, back about four years ago starting a blog, which was just a creative outlet. It wasn't actually designed to be a business opportunity. My husband watches a lot of football and I was like, what can I do? Oh, I'm gonna learn how to build a website. What can I write about? I know about money. So that's how my whole career and career change started as a creative outlet. Um, but the blog took off because people want to understand the basics. And I've always been very much no jargon, mm -hmm saying things how they are in a relatable way, which actually a lot of the finance industry already creates a very big barrier with Joe Blogs, the general public, because they use a lot of language that most people don't understand. We weren't taught about it at school. And unless you've got parents or teachers, which it's not really taught in school, personal finance. Mm. So unless you've had that grounding, you're kind of floating along going, oh, I'm kind of winging this, which is what the majority of the adult population in this country are doing. Some with success, most with a mixture of success <laughs> and carrying a lot of baggage from past mistakes and a not too positive money mindset, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Yeah, huge. And that's quite terrifying when you think about it, that how many of us are just living with this oblivion that actually things can be different. Yeah. <laughs> we can we can have such a different relationship. And ultimately money, it's an enabler, but it's also keeps us in place. I mean, as the title says, it can just hold you in place. It can hold you in that fear. There's so much um, that you tell yourself um, about money it's incredible. So I'm not sure we're going to crack all this in 30 minutes, but you know, we're going to share enough that gets people thinking, oh my yeah. God, I've got to look into this. So I would like to start with the very basic money mindset, because I think it was actually your blog all those years ago. I think I've been with you since that blog. Um, you wrote about it and I thought, what the heck is that? Money mindset? Yeah. Yeah. What? So just in you know guide for dummies which was like me it's probably still me what is it well I've, i'm going to take one step back because i i started the blog talking about practical money management so what you should be doing you know you should be budgeting you should be investing x y and z yeah. you should have a will you should have insurance all good practical stuff right and people would nod along they'd read it and they go yeah that makes perfect sense yeah. they wouldn't do it and that's what drove me from what started off as a blog into coach or coaching, mentoring, teaching, and really focusing on the emotional side of money. So money is very symbiotic. We've got the yeah. practical stuff, and then we've got the big part of it, which is actually the emotional attachment that we have to money. And that's the piece that most people don't even really delve into. And you've hit the nail on the head. What is money mindset? I don't think I even really appreciated that we had a money mindset until I started on why aren't people doing what I'm telling them to do? You know, I'm saying something that's sensible. Why is that person not going and investing? Why are they hoarding money in a bank account, earning no interest, as an example? And it's all what's going up in here. You know, it's all what's going on in your mind. So your money mindset is essentially the combination of the beliefs that you have and the attitudes towards money. Now, 
again, you might be going, well, what the hell? Beliefs around money, what? You know, but we all grow up as small children absorbing things from our environment and predominantly our parents in that very early stage. So up till we're about seven, our, our little brains just absorb everything that's going on around them without any question. They are sponges. There's no, why is that true? All of this, it just gets absorbed. So a lot of our belief system around money is formed by the time that we're seven years old, which if there's any parents listening and you've ever said to your children, money doesn't grow on trees or oh, money's dirty, don't put it in your mouth. All of this messaging <laughs> gets absorbed and getting, you know, you know, sinking into that brain and coming out as our adult beings. So the, our belief system is what we believe to be true about money. Now, actually, there's a whole lot of negative language yeah. that gets used around money. I, for one, heard money doesn't grow on trees. Um, you have to work hard mm -hmm. for money. I had some I had some really positive messaging come through to me as well. My dad and my granddad were both uh, self-employed, which I think puts a different spin on mm. things. But certainly, um, for most people in society, the school system that we have and the legacy of, of society for, for years gone by means that we are conditioned to believe that you go to school, you work hard for money. You know, money is something that is intrinsic to our feeling of self-worth. What is success to most people? It's usually tied in in some way mm. to the job that they have. And that's all belief systems. That's all what we what we hold to be true. Um, and and actually, for a lot of people, there can be a lot of negative intertwined in their belief system. So if you think about what is a positive, healthy money mindset, that is having beliefs that money can go, do good in the world, mm -hmm. that anybody has the opportunity to do what they want to do, that success is possible. Um, that you know anybody can climb out of a situation mm. the opposite being that you know a lot of people are become entrenched in um a familial money mindset and it's why i personally believe that poverty and getting people out of poverty is so difficult because if we start to move ourselves into a different belief system and take actions to move away from somewhere that we've always been and our family has always been and generations gone by Oh, what are we doing? We're kind of taking ourselves away from that safety net. Mm. And as human beings, our belief system keeps us in a in a place where we are in our comfort zone. Our, our brains are designed to, you know, take the path of least resistance, which for most people is the comfort zone. And that yeah. that's where your belief system is, your current belief system. Yeah. And that's incredible. That's where hopefully people are listening to this going, oh, like the money story that you tell yourself. Even if you just spend five minutes after this, listening to this and just think, what is, what am I telling myself? What did I hear when I was a child? It's incredible what you hear. I remember things like uh, millionaires, like bloody million, you know, they're, they're just greedy. And there's probably something, when people are rich, there's probably something not quite right about it. Like, you know, that wasn't particularly my family, but that was sort of messaging. And interesting what like the media as well, when you're that, you know, that kind of portrayal as well, when you're younger, what's it saying, how people are and yeah. So what is your money story? What is going on there? Yeah, you've um, got some really great things there. You know, you can ask yourself, what did what did you hear growing up? Yeah. What did you see? Because it's not always what you what you what you yeah. heard. You know, it might be parents arguing about money bills yeah. if money wasn't uh, freely available you know arguing can create a situation where our belief is that money equals conflict mm -hmm. and as an adult you might grow up to be someone that avoids conversations with your partner about money because anything to do with money is conflict and you want to stay away from it um, yeah. but when you start exploring some of this stuff and experiences that we had as well so you know some quite meaningful ones death of a parent um, divorce of parents can be traumas that can really relive themselves through the way that people um, have a relationship with money as an mm. adult. Yeah. And one of the things I remember uh, reading about, or maybe you ran, you were running a workshop around money, respecting money. Now yeah. that was a, in, that really 
provoke thinking about respect money because that's very different to being afraid of it or not spending it in the right way or investment but respecting money yeah and that comes from a belief that money is money is energy you know we, we talk about money and going back to what i just said we put such a uh, we put money on such a pedestal that that we we do drive our own success by how much money we have in the bank what job we're bringing on in how much it pays what cars on the drive you know how much that costs but actually money's very circular you know and what is enough for one person is not necessarily the same as the mm. person next door or or your colleague at work um so learning to understand what your individual relationship with money is it's such a profound thing to do because how you do money is how you do everything in life i am a work in progress perfectionist right and i'm very much an accumulate accumulator type you know i like to have money in the bank i like to see my wealth building all the time as a business person, I've recognized that that holds challenges for me because <laughs> I struggle to invest in the same way that somebody else with a different personality type would easily throw their credit card at various different types of investment. So understanding you know, your unique personality um, really helps with that respect of what the role that money can play in your life. Oh, that's huge. That's huge because... I'm guessing people are going to be listening to this going, oh my God, this is why me and my friends have different views on decisions or even partners, you know, wow, I want to do this. And they're like, you're crazy. What are you doing? That's so much money. And we, it's like a different language that we're talking about. We have just a different relationship with risk investment, you know, what money is. Um, that's huge. Yeah, very much so. And, you know, we, we, we often think of the two ends of the extreme being the spender and the saver. But actually, it's very much a matrix. You know, we've all got different parts that can come into play depending on situations that we're in. Yeah. Um, but being able to understand that everyone is different is really quite important. I think especially when people are, you know, your audience is maybe looking at a move into a new area. You know, there's no one size fits all. And for somebody, they might be able to take that risk with a risk mindset. You know, okay, I can see the potential mm. here. I can see that if I, for example, go and work for myself, gosh, the sky's the limit. Nobody's going to tell me how much I'm going to earn. There's there's an endless possibility. Whereas somebody else might come at that with, oh, okay, I need to make sure that I've got six months of expenses in mm. the bank account so that you know I can cover myself and I'll feel comfortable. I'll be able to sleep at night before I can even think about handing in my notice or, or whatever, you know, do, doing something risky, but yeah. all different. So it's about appreciating what is your dominant kind of personality type when it comes to money and making decisions that align with that. So that mm. you can take those positive steps without any of the unnecessary feelings of angst and anxiety coming up. Yeah, and, and getting support from people who really respect that, because if you've got a coach or a mentor that's pushing you into a space that actually they're not respecting that that's how you're thinking, oh, that could be very stressful. I've seen it. I've not experienced it, but I've seen that happen where it's just that difference and it's all yeah. about money. Um, I think as well, I certainly resonate with what you just said there, because probably when I started out corporate life, earning good money, you get to a certain point, and you just think, well, this is what I, I I earn. This is what I spend. This is who I am. But now I want to do it in a different way. So now I'm just going to transfer all of that thinking about this is what I earn. This is my worth. I'm just going to transfer it into a different world. And it was a big shock to me to go, no, that is not how this works now. You're now compromising different things. You're getting something else out of it. It's not just about money. You might not ever earn what you've earned because it's very different self-employment huge shock so how do people kind of go through what's the few things that they can do just to get them in that space of understanding themselves at step one there, obviously there's a huge lot of work to do, to do and you've got to you've got to go through this a lot to understand it but what's a couple of steps that they can they can do now i think at the core and probably the biggest takeaway that i've had personally and in use with my clients since training as a coach is understanding values work 
and understanding and getting to the core of exactly what it is that makes you tick and what's important to you. And I think if you are at a, a crossroads in terms of life choices, career choices, you all have a very different set of what that is compared to maybe what that would have looked like at the start of your career. So taking the time to really think about what is it that's important to me? Where does money actually true? When I stop and think about it, where does money truly sit in that? Because for most people, our default belief is, I look at the job and I look at how much I can earn. How many people don't, you know, it's it's one or yeah, two. Yeah, it's all about the salary. Yeah, <laughs> right. You yeah. Know, at the moment, maybe there's there's quite a bit of an element of flexibility coming up there. You know, it's been pushed up higher in people's thinking. But let's be honest, most people want to know how much they can earn. But if you stop and think, at the life stage that you're at, with the achievements that you've got around you, maybe you're a homeowner already, maybe you've had children, maybe your children are more grown up and you can see the end of them flying the nest and not being financially responsible for them. You can assess, you know, what your asset pool looks like. How well are you progressing towards, you know, a fund for when you want to give up work, a retirement, a retirement pot? What other assets might you have? All of that stuff, stopping and sitting and thinking, mm. how, how important is money in that hierarchy of values for me? And actually, what might be more important? Is it freedom? Are there other elements in my life that I've compromised in the early part of my career that actually I really would love to elevate? And then when you've got that bigger picture that isn't so narrow focused just on how much am I going to earn, actually opens the uh, the possibilities around, well, what does that look like in terms yeah. of my ideal next step? And often for a lot of people, it doesn't have, it isn't what they thought it was. Yeah. I stopped working with a client who, um, we did a big piece around kind of looking at where she's at financially and, and her and her husband together have built up a really big pension pot, which they're not quite 40 yet. We, we kind of projected it forward another 20 years and, and your money can be kind of expected to grow and double if you're investing it wisely every 10 years. So her pot that she has now can be expected to be four times that by the time they want to finish work. We looked at that and she was like, gosh, right, I, I've kind of got enough in my pension pot that I don't really need to put any more in. <laughs> they will. But what does that do now? You know, actually, what does that free me up? I don't have to have this job that I'm tied to because I was thinking that I really needed all the perks. Mm. What can I do? You know, she'd be missing exercise and all of that. And, and can she drop to three days a week and, and pick up some other passions around her working life that, that had completely dropped off while she was focused on her career development. Yeah, that's such a, and that is, that's the relationship with it. It's just not assuming that well, that's what you need. I think the other thing as well that you made me think about was um, challenging yourself a little bit on what you're spending. Um, it is about values. I love that. And getting to know yourself about, well, what is important to me and being honest, like just be honest. It some, some, materialism isn't a bad thing it's just a thing so like with me I sort of went through that mm, I shouldn't really have my really nice car probably don't need that to, to you know achieve my dream of self-employment but then I really did need my nice cars it turned out <laughs> so I had to put it back in the budget but, but it was just honest I was like well, no I don't want to drive a I don't want to I'm up and down the motorway all the time so I had to be honest with myself and it and you don't want to do you you don't want to admit that money is important in certain areas but that goes back to that story you were saying doesn't it yeah. it just I mean, goes back to that is, money story what is important to you yeah <laughs> that car. there's something there you know what what's that yeah outwardly i guess there's a little bit of state status uh personality type in you um, yeah but you know, safety that that's my thing I, i'll have to be safe on a road and like my yeah. perception of what is that that's yeah, that was huge. Yeah, but that's what's important, right? Yeah. Is understanding what things in life are important to you. Um, 
I'm not big on cutting spending like I never have been. My, yeah. my money message is not about being frugal. It's not about uh, cutting down. It's really about filling the pot at the top so that you can live the life that you want to live. Um, but certainly there is an element if you are thinking of doing something new, it's the perfect time to assess how much lifestyle creep might have crept into your life. When we <laughs> yeah. talk about lifestyle creep, that's essentially where every time we get a pay rise, we kind of match our spending up to the new level of money that's coming in. So for yeah. a lot of people, that means the bigger house. It means an extra holiday a year. It means a car every three years instead of every five years. And suddenly we're living this lifestyle where, you know, we, we have to keep, the job mm. and we have to keep that level of income coming in to support the lifestyle that we've created where actually you know it again this line in the sand if you're if it's forced upon you or if you choose it it's a great time to reassess how much of that is what you truly want how much yeah. of it is keeping up with the joneses yeah. how much of it might actually be your partner's choices because again, when we're in a in a relationship, we're not always exactly the same in terms of how we view money. So it's a great opportunity to just question how much your belief system has kind of spiraled into a lifestyle yeah. that actually maybe you don't need. Yeah, challenge yourself definitely. Yeah. Um, I love that as well. Things I remember starting out, and you know, money's tight at the beginning as well. When you're starting a business, my goodness, I think I gave myself like six weeks or something ridiculous, and yeah. it's actually turned out to be like six months to get to that point, like build up slowly. And I remember sitting in Costa or a cafe, you know, doing some work, thinking suddenly I had a whole different relationship with that cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, and I was like, hang on a minute you know yesterday in corporate life i'd just buy coffee you know whatever and even, i wouldn't even be able to tell you how much it was i'd go to a supermarket just stick everything in the trolley i wouldn't tell you anything about price i couldn't even tell you what i paid at the till like i just was all like done without thought suddenly now i'm like no hang on a minute if i have like god if i'm here every day having three of these oh my god like, your brain starts blowing so even things like that you have a very different relationship you see things in a completely different way when you have to and when you're starting something new that's actually a very a very good awareness because one of the things that i get all of my clients to do is bring more awareness to how they're interacting with money and i do very much believe that when we are employed we don't have that same level of awareness yeah. it's a safety thing for most of us money is a base need well, not, not for most of us. We all need money, right? It, it, it facilitates our survival. We need a roof over our heads. We need food in the fridge. We need clothes on our bodies. They are Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, this bottom level, we need all that stuff to feel safe. So when you can move beyond um, that kind of feeling of what do I need to be safe around, just raising this mm. level of awareness around what, what do I do with money? When you move from employed where you have that safety in the form of a of a monthly paycheck when that safety blanket goes away suddenly you're like ooh, ooh. <laughs> but raising that level of awareness is brilliant because we can only change what we're aware of so being aware of how things make you feel like mm. do you feel uncomfortable with conversations around money when you are spending it gives you that opportunity to say you know, what value is that cup of coffee bringing me? Yeah. Or something bigger that you might have easily spent while you were in corporate employment. For example, yeah. um, training. You know, for a lot of self-employed people, spending money on themselves for training is essential. And it might have just happened while you were employed. You yeah. think about it. it just came in your budget and it was part of your, your personal development, but at no cost to you. Suddenly when it has to come out of your, your pocket, it becomes something that you're much more conscious and much more aware of. And the, the ROI is generally better because you're very targeted in terms of, is this the right thing for me? Is it worth what I'm paying for? And God damn, I'm going to get the value for it my purse. <laughs> that is so true. I mean, how many of us in corporate had all of this luxury of leadership development programs, amazing training, all of this amazing experiences over the years. Um, and now we look back going, oh my God, why didn't I just take it all and 
absorb myself because now I'm paying a fortune every yeah. year for it. <laughs> but you're right. You make damn sure that you get every single bit out of it. That's yeah. for sure. Such a good point. Um, this is great. Uh, thank you so much, Emma. What I thought I would end on is your reinvention because you've touched on it already. But I just wanted to say that, you know, your story in itself is a, an amazing example of reinvention, thinking differently about yourself. You've gone from the blog three years ago to being on a poster in Houston, full size, <laughs> that I managed to get a picture of by standing there for about 15 minutes waiting for it to come back up. But, you know, amazing, amazing things can happen when you change your relationship with money and success. What's your success story? What you're telling yourself? And you really go for it and you can embrace that, you know, who knows what can happen? You could be that person on the billboard in Houston. <laughs> well, for me, it's about finding my passion. Like I say, I fell into this. It wasn't something that I was working part time when I started my blog. Um, it wasn't something that was like floating my boat. It wasn't lighting me up, but it was something that at that time in my life, it enabled me to be with my children, which talking about values, that was my top value. I wanted the yeah. uh, ability to be the type of mum I wanted to be. So that was the choice I made. And this has developed into something which every day I love what I do and it doesn't feel like work. Um, and the, all the training I'm doing, it's, it's just so me. And I think when you find your passion, that's when work doesn't feel like work. And that is where I'm at right now. And it's a wonderful place to be. <laughs> and how did you get your face on that billboard in Houston? That was a very weird moment seeing you there. So I um, <laughs> do a lot of work with brands. I'm really passionate. My two big things are getting more people saving for retirement because as a society, we don't pay enough attention to future us. And listeners, you will not be able to rely on the state pension. So you absolutely must start putting more money than you think you need into your retirement fund. So that's my number one thing. And my second one is getting more women, particularly into investing. Mm. Um, the media at large very much targets men to be the investors. As women, we're targeted as the thrifty ones or the spenders. And there's a lot of research out there that shows the different ways that men and women are spoken to. So I want to change that dynamic. You know, I want mm. women to be empowered, to make better financial choices, to be equals when it comes to money, to not defer to men and to have that knowledge to be able to do that. But all of that, those two missions have led to me working with some really incredible financial brands, one of which is Pension B. So I am on there um, as a customer. <laughs> I'm actually there as a customer. So, uh, yeah, I had a lovely photo shoot, got all dolled up. And <laughs> now my photo is everywhere around the country and soon to be coming to your TV screens. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right, I'm ready. I'm ready for that this time. That's not going to be such a surprise staring at me. Brilliant. Well, I just think it's all really inspiring. And again, you know, so much in there for people. This whole reinvention is about just giving people little nuggets because it can feel so overwhelming sometimes. You really want to change your life, but it feels so overwhelming. Where do you start? You can actually start now even if you're in a job now just like what you've said challenging what you've got that relationship with money and is that the thing that's holding you back are you just scared like what if it doesn't work what if no money comes along what happens so thank you so much for sharing all of that i hope it's inspired people and i hope it's got people thinking in a completely different way emma where can people find you so i'm mainly active on instagram under the handle at money whisperer underscore and my website is themoneywhisperer.co.uk. And I can highly recommend joining joining your lounge because it's um, full of all sorts of workshops and like just little nuggets that you get every now and again that stick in your head. And you think, oh my God, right, I've got to do some work on this. So thank you so much. You can go and have dinner now. Very much appreciate your time. Thank Take you care. for having me. Thanks, Emma. Bye. Bye.